Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will talk a little bit about side effects in Compose, what they actually are and what we can do about them. So essentially a side effect is just everything that escapes the scope of a function. So for Compose specifically, that would mean everything inside of a composable function that does not have anything to do with Compose. So that could be something super simple as incrementing a variable that is not a state, not a composed state. Um, but it could also be something like making a network call. And putting such side effects into your composable functions is one of the worst things you can do in Compose because we don't have control over our composable functions. Well, we can define them, but Compose, the, the Compose framework decides when they are actually called. So let's say you would make a network call in your composable function that would mean that on every recomposition and every UI update that network call would fire again. And of course that is terrible. You, you don't want this. But of course we still want to be able to make network calls, to be able to access our database or just to increment variables that are not state. So what we need is basically a safe environment where we can do these things. And that's where so-called effect handlers come into play. So Compose already comes with a bunch of these handlers and I will now go through the most important of them and show you how they work. So the most simple one is just called side effect. With a side effect, we basically have access to a block of code that is executed after every successful recomposition of our composable. So let's just create a composable down here. Composable function, my composable, doesn't matter here. And in here, let's say we just have a button with an empty on click for now, and we assign a text to that button that says click me. Now let, let's say for some reason we have a global variable here, var i is equal to zero, and for some reason we want to increment that i here inside of our composable. But if we would just do it like this, it would be considered a side effect. And that is the bad practice here. Well, if you simply increment a variable here, um, there is not too much that can go wrong. Um, it could happen that the value of your variable is not what, it, what you expect it to be. But it's not as bad as if you would do a network call here that would, um, on the one hand, cause some network traffic every recomposition. And on the other hand, just take a lot of time. But either way, you really want to avoid um, putting such side effects into your composables. And if you have to do them, then you can use side effect. And you can see that gives us a block of code. And then we can put in our I++ in here. And that will just now make sure that this block of code is called once this, comp uh, this composable successfully recomposed, basically. So after every successful composition. If the composition fails for some reason, this block of code is not executed. And now sometimes you have a piece of code that requires some kind of cleanup after a composable basically finished composing. And then we cannot use side effect. Instead, what we need to use is called disposable effect. So let's say we have our back dispatcher here, which is just the dispatcher that is invoked when we click on our back button on our phone. So just pass that here and imagine we would pass that from the outside and we would want to override the on back pressed callback here. That is the example they use in the Android documentation and I think it fits pretty well because it's simple. So we would just create our callback here and use that in a remember block so it's not always reinitialized. And here we can create that callback using object colon on back pressed callback. We want to enable it. And in here we can then override handle on back pressed and here do something. And well, if we would now use our back press dispatcher that we passed here and add a callback, the callback that we created up here then we would add this callback on every recomposition, but we don't remove it here. So that would cause memory leaks, which we want to avoid. So that is another type here of side effect. And because 
if we add a callback here and we want to remove it afterwards, we need to use this disposable effect, which is exactly for that need. And you can see that now requires that we pass a key here, and we will also see that key in upcoming effects I will show you in this video. What this basically means is we can now, or we have to pass something now, and whenever that something, in our case our back dispatcher here, back press dispatcher, whenever that changes, this block is basically executed, our um, callbacks that we added previously are disposed and new callbacks are initialized. So how that should look like now is we don't want to have I++ here. Instead we want to take our callback or add callback function, put it inside of this disposable effect and now you can see we get an error here if we hover over this it says it's re it required a disposable effect result but it found unit. So what this disposable effect wants from us is this on dispose function and you can see that exactly returns this disposable effect result and this function is now triggered when these corresponding callbacks we added should be disposed so in here we can then use back press dispatcher dot um, or is it actually back callback uh, just callback dot remove yeah in here we can then remove the callback that we added previously so every time you just need to free up some memory, some resources um, inside of a composable, then you should use this disposable effect. And now for the next effect I want to show you, I will actually remove our composable here. And also this I, and I will put that code directly into set content because then it's a little bit more clear, I think. So let's say we have a scaffold here and we create a state for that scaffold. You already know that to be able to show snack bars, remember scaffold state, and then we pass that here for the scaffold state. And then let's say we have some kind of state in here, which is just a counter that we can increment when clicking on a button, um, var counter by remember, and in here mutable state, mutable state of zero initially, and then simply use a button and when we click on that button, we want to just increase that counter. And we also want to give our button a little bit of text, which just says, click me, and it displays the current count. And now let's say if we launch this app, then it's very simple. I think you already guessed how that will look like. We just have a simple button here, and we, when we click that, we simply increase that counter. But let's say we now want to display a snack bar if that counter is divisible by let's say five. What we would then do is something like if counter modulo five is equal to zero and let's also say that the counter is greater than zero to not initially fire off that snack bar and in here we now want to show this, the snack bar which we can do with scaffold state dot snack bar host state dot show snack bar and just show hello. And you can already see that gives us an error because show snack bar suspend function. So we need to execute that within a coroutine. And you have also already um, seen this in this compose playlist where we used this val scope equal to remember coroutine scope which will just give us a coroutine scope that is aware of this composition's lifecycle. So with that scope, we can safely execute suspend functions inside of a composable by simply doing scope.launch and then putting in this line. And if we now relaunch the app and then click our button here, and when we are at five, you can see the snack bar fires off. When we are at 10, it will fire off again. And when we click it a lot, then these snack bars are basically enqueued and they will fire off one after another. But let's say we actually don't want this, that these snack bars fire off one after another. Let's say we have some kind of functionality that requires it, um, that this scope here is cancelled when this condition is not true anymore. And that is where a launched effect comes into play. So that is another effect handler and we can just swap this scope.launch block out with launch effect 
and that will again require us to pass a key. So whenever this key changes, this launched effect will basically cancel the coroutine it runs in. So that is basically inside of a coroutine here. It will cancel that and restart it. So we can pass our scaffold state here, dot snackbar host state, and remove the block here. And by the way, we can also pass multiple keys as you can see here. So if you want this to, ch uh, to also be triggered when other keys change, then you can also pass more than just one. So if we now launch our app again, and then click our button. Okay, now our snack bar will display, you can see. And when we update it, okay, then it will immediately disappear because our coroutine is cancelled. So it will really only show when that number is divisible by five. But let's actually get to my personal favorite one, which I think I will use most often, which is called produce state. And that is basically built on top of this launched effect here and is in the end just syntactical sugar. But what we can do with this is we can basically execute asynchronous code inside of a coroutine. And once that coroutine code, that asynchronous code finished, it will automatically parse the result into state and trigger our, um, or and will make our composable recompose. So it will update our UI automatically when we get the result from, let's say from our network call, from a database request or so. So instead of using this remember mutable state off here, I will remove this and set our counter equal to produce state, which we need to pass an initial value for. So just the, the initial value of that state. So this function will return a state. Um, let's just pass zero for that, for that initial value and remove the producer and instead open this here. You can see this gives us a produce state scope of type int because we pass an integer here for the initial value. It now expects us to execute some kind of asynchronous code. So that is inside of a coroutine here. And then after that, we can just ask for state, use a value and set that to the result of our asynchronous call. So let's just delay this code for three seconds just for demonstration and then set the value to five or four. Then you can see that because this counter is now of type state of integer, it doesn't recognize that counter as an integer and we can fix this by just appending value here as well. And we cannot actually modify that counter now because it's immutable. So let's just remove this on click listener here and write value here as well. And if we now relaunch this app, take a look here, then after three seconds, you will see, okay, then this number switches to four. So initially, this initial value here was assigned, which is zero. Then it went into this coroutine. It delayed the code for three seconds. And after that, it updated the value with four, which caused this scaffold to recompose and just update all the composables in it that make somehow use of that state, like this button text, for example. And that really makes many things super simple because you can just, um, if you make a network call, you can set the initial value to some kind of um, loading resource just to indicate, hey, I'm in, a, in the loading state. Then you make a network call here and then you assign the result to either the, the result of the network call or to some kind of error and then display that error in your UI accordingly or just display the result of the network call. So I hope you like this video. If so, please leave me a like. And also if you're interested in more advanced Android premium courses, check out the first link in this video's description, which will lead you to my website where you will find these paid courses. These are a way to support me and my work and also to bring your Android skills to the next level. I hope I'll see you in the next video again. Have an awesome day. Bye bye.